We're here at 4th and Bagby on Baylor's campus where one construction crew member has died. Officials say they found this middle-aged man in the bottom of the elevator pit after an elevator crushed him. Bikers came here with signs, support from their friends and family, and of course their bikes to show that they are not all bad. Joining me live right now is our very own Sheriff Parnell McNamara, and he's going to give me a little more insight about what happened here today. So first off, tell me, you can see Twin Peaks behind me. It is still a very active scene. We we found out that nine are dead, eight were actually dead here on scene, and one has died in the hospital. Even though it's the day before game day, Baylor students and fans are already out here preparing for tomorrow. As you can see, some people are even camping out. Habitat for Humanity has made a huge difference in the lives of some Waco residents. Today was no different as they raised the walls of a new house in the Carver community. The fire caused a lot of damage to the roof of this apartment complex. Firefighters tried to put it out with this fire hydrant and one down on 59th Street. After they found that neither of these were working, they had to use one further down the road. If you do receive one of these phone calls and the caller seems sketchy, hang up immediately and call the city of Waco. This way you can determine the status of your water account. Police are still here on the scene. It's still a very live and active site. We're just about to give us an update on how many different biker gangs were here. As of right now, it's about two or three. What if your students' test scores impacted how much their teachers are paid. That's exactly what could happen if two bills proposed in the state of Texas pass. The Cole family said they found two of their dogs right here in their front yard and the third dog back behind their bedroom window. After surveying the property, Jeff Cole said he found this bone. The Attorney General's division partnered with several local law enforcement agencies to operate this sting, each playing an important role in arresting these nine men. This intersection is a one-way at Bosque and North 26, and as the two vehicles collided, they ended up in that back corner. I don't know how many people have lost their life here. A 62-year-old man has died after two cars collided at the intersection of Bosque and North 26 this afternoon. One of these vehicles ran the red light and caused a crash. But this isn't uncommon. See, everybody around here knows about the accident. And there goes somebody speeding right there, see? Residents living at the intersection say accidents happen here all the time. We've had three, three accidents right here on the corner and sometimes in the yard and sometimes it ends up in the Fiesta parking lot. Jeffrey Waterhouse says he worries about his daughter's safety. We don't even let her in the front yard because of accidents like this. These residents asked us to talk to the city about the possibility of adding speed bumps. Right here is the impact zone. But the city says that isn't likely. Speed bumps are not an option, especially on a city street. Uh, you know, we're, we're designed to carry traffic and get it there as smoothly as we can, especially a major thoroughfare like 25th, 26th, or Holman or Bosque. Wago police say they are aware of the problem. It's a pretty dangerous intersection. We do have crashes here on a pretty frequent basis. It's nothing about the intersection. It's more about the drivers that are choosing to run a red light and cause the crash. So they have a plan of action. Tomorrow, we're going to have a high number of officers out, and we're going to be looking specifically at red light intersections. And we're focusing specifically on people that make that conscious choice to run a red light. Uh, and I think this gives a prime example to show why that is not a good option when people choose to do that. As of right now, we still don't know who was driving which vehicle. This investigation is still ongoing. Lauren Partain, KWTX News 10. I just thank God that we, everybody got out. Residents say it was about 6.30 this morning when they first smelled a fire. It started in Unit 5805 at the Colonial Arms apartment complex. Although the fire damaged five units, no one was injured. Nothing happened to either one of us over here. Uh, everybody got out safe. Julian Rios Jr. recalls his wife waking him up. She smelled the fire and um, checked the rooms. It was in our room and then come outside we found the neighbor asking for help, you know, call 911. And before you know it, it was her house that actually caught on fire. Rios' main goal was to get his two boys and wife out of their apartment before he stopped to help. I tried to put it out with her fire extinguisher, then I got my extinguisher and we couldn't do it. One reason firefighters couldn't contain the fire sooner. One of the fire hydrants didn't work or else they, this probably wouldn't have happened. The City of Waco Water Department maintains the city's fire hydrants while the fire department checks them. Water Department spokesman Jonathan Eccles says they don't know why the fire hydrants malfunctioned. It is a huge, I would say, coincidence that two right in the same area failed like that. Luis Garcia lives two doors down from where the fire started. Today, he also has to pack up. Red Cross said it was pretty much unsalvageable. 
So there's not, you know, we get what we, we got what we can. These families are now gathering what is left of their homes, but not without the help of some family and friends. It's really a, a good feeling to know that you can pull together in, in a tough time like this. And so uh, to know that you can depend on fr family, friends, church members to pull together and help one another out. Garcia and Rio say they don't have a plan for the future, but hope for the best. Red Cross is going to put us up in a hotel for a couple of days. They gave us $200 for that. And then after that, we don't know. I don't know from here. It's now from now on, just move on and don't look back. Lauren Partain, KWTX News 10. We're not talking about while pedaling rapidly and sweating in the Texas heat, Command Sergeant Major Brian Flom proudly rode behind the president as he led the way for his annual 100-kilometer bike ride. It's riding with my brothers and sisters, and it's, and it's instant family. After entering the U.S. Army in 1991, he recalls his time spent during deployment at Fort Hood. So spending all those years at Fort Hood and now being able to come back here, where I've actually been up to Crawford and uh, when President Bush was a president, was part of the uh, security detail for Air Force One when he would come in and, and land here in, uh, in Waco, and now it's just kind of the icing on the cake. Now there's a different reason why he's back back at the president's ranch to be honored for his service in Iraq. I took shrapnel to my to my head and went into my into my face and threw and lodged in the back of my neck. Today he continues to proudly serve and it's men and women like Command Sergeant Major Flom President Bush hopes to focus on this weekend. We'd like to remind our country of how fortunate we are to have had people volunteer in the face of danger. They're the ones who uh, saw unspeakable horror and uh, and they're dealing with it all kinds of different ways. One way, however, I can tell you for certain is to be on a mountain bike with their friends. In the president's effort to serve those that have served us, participants take home a very special keepsake. Each year, Trek donates these bikes to these brave men and women in order to ride alongside President Bush for this event. Command Sergeant Major Flom says participating in an event like this helps wounded warriors like himself move on. It just continues the healing process and we can come together and get out and still be part of society and still be active and go ride more than 60 miles. Riding with the best. What we're talking about. Lauren Partain, KWTX News 10. The Austin Police Department is catching a lot of heat after a video was released Saturday night of an officer handcuffing a man. At one point, the video shows an officer reaching for a man's cell phone just before another man is sprayed by another officer. Emergency crews are evaluating whether it's safe to recover a van submerged in a central Texas river. It's going on right now at the Leon River in Coriel County. Sheriff Johnny Burke says someone called 911 around 10 this morning. A man has died after being hit by a car on a major street in Texas. Central crews responded to South Fort Hood Street in Colleen after getting calls about a person who had been hit by a car. Bikers from all across Texas and the country will be riding into Waco this weekend in protest of the bikers who remain in jail. It's the biggest biker event since the shootings on May 17th.